So, you had a panic attack, huh? Or maybe you're still kind of having one. Man, that's bullshit. That sucks. Did I hear a slight giggle there? Maybe there's life in you yet. Listen, let's talk about this. I think we can get through it together. I'm really sorry that happened to you. Maybe it's not the first time even. If so, I'm sorry it happened again, but maybe we can talk about some things together right now that will help you not only in these few moments, but in the future too. I hope that it doesn't happen again, but if it does, you know, maybe good to have some tools at your disposal. So first of all, Let's take three deep breaths together, okay? We're going to breathe in and hold it for a couple seconds and then let it go. We'll do that together. So let's do it. Breathe in. And out. Good. Again. Shake your body out a little bit. Just get the good vibes flowing. You may be feeling a bit distant right now, like you're not actually in the place that you are. Maybe you're feeling like you're hovering above, looking down at yourself, or even like you're here, but you're just behind some sort of fog, like you can't quite reach out and grasp the moment that you're in. Don't worry, that's... That's a normal part of this. What you're experiencing is called depersonalization. It can also be called derealization. And it means exactly what we just talked about. Being distant from the moment, feeling like you can't actually connect, like you're on autopilot. Everything's happening around you. I know that can feel scary, like you're not in control of things. And for somebody who is a bit anxious, that lack of control it can feel really difficult to cope with. But you are in control. I promise. You may not be control, in control of everything in the world, everything in your life, but right here, right now, you do have an influence. And you have an opportunity to use that influence to help yourself out. I want you to try to connect to your surroundings. This is called grounding. I want you to go through the process of trying to become more grounded. And it's okay if you can't fully connect, if you can't fully get here. You're still hearing me. You're still doing this. But I want you to think about your senses. So your sense of touch, your sense of smell, your sight, your hearing, your taste and think of something right now in this immediate environment that you can notice with each of those senses so first think about taste what are you tasting right now maybe you're chewing gum or you have a mint maybe there's a piece of food that's near you that you could take a bite of a drink water soda beer, whatever the case may be, either notice the taste that you already have in your mouth or find something to taste in your immediate environment and just notice it. What does it taste like? Right now I can taste this funny little interaction between the dinner that I had about 30 minutes ago and the mint that I had about one minute ago. It's like the cool rush of the mint is trying to like push its way through the tang from dinner, but now it's kind of a silly little mixture of the two. <laughs> I'm probably due for another mint if we're being honest. That's good. Keep breathing and keep laughing. 
Now, what about your sight? What do you see? Maybe there's something in your immediate environment that you can look at that maybe you haven't looked at recently. Look up at the top of the room. Maybe you've spent most of your time looking at the floor today. What do you see up there? Even if it's something like cobwebs or a light that's out, anything interesting that you can just draw your eye to. And what do you hear? Aside from my voice, is there anything else going on in your environment that you can pick out? Cars going by, people talking in the next room, your own breathing, your computer fan, maybe even your heartbeat if it's beating loud enough, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now let's engage your sense of touch. What's something that you can touch in your environment? Maybe even the sharp tip of a pencil or a stress ball, your keyboard, your hair, anything. Touch something and feel it and notice the sensations that you have in your fingers when you do that. Good. Now, what have we covered? We did smell. No, we didn't do smell. What do you smell? That's the next one. What do you smell in your environment? Right now I smell a very unique smell because I am in my little recording booth that I made and the walls are covered in moving blankets, thick blue moving blankets. And they have a very particular smell. It's not bad, but they just smell like the certain fabric that they use. So that's what I smell. What is it that you smell? So now that you've gone through your senses, maybe you're feeling a bit more connected, a bit more grounded. You're here with me in this moment, which is great. You may also notice that as you focused on these other things, your mind has wandered a bit from your sense of impending doom and the feelings that you might be dying or having a heart attack or something's actually wrong. Anxiety likes to play tricks on you, and one of the tricks that it plays on you is making you feel like something is urgently wrong, that you need to solve something right now, or else something bad's going to happen. Many, many, many cases, that is not true. There is not as much immediacy and just franticness to the situation. That's your brain playing a trick on you. In essence, anxiety is when your body and your mind interpret something as dangerous, make you feel a sense of danger when there actually is not one. I'm guessing you didn't almost just get hit by a car or you're not currently being stalked by a tiger. Those would be situations in which there's a true feeling of fear, anxiety, and danger. And that's what it's there for, because you need that physical reaction, that fight or flight response, where you speed up your heart, you breathe faster, you prepare for action so you can keep yourself safe. But when somebody doesn't text you back and you start to get worried, or when you have a paper coming up that you can't get yourself to start, that fight or flight response does not serve a real purpose because there's no true immediate sense of danger. You're not going to get hurt. You're not going to die. Which brings me to another point. You don't die. You don't get hurt from panic attacks. If you're getting panic attacks day after day after day for your whole life, sure, you can have some effects in terms of just flooding yourself with stress hormones all the time. It's not great for you, but it's also not going to make you keel over and die. But if you occasionally have panic attacks or you're going through a year where it's just really rough and you can't quite pull it together and you're feeling very anxious overall, that's not going to hurt you. So don't make the mistake of thinking, oh God, I'm hurting myself, I should stop. But now that I'm thinking about hurting myself, it just makes me hurt more. And then you spiral into this 
anxious ball of blech. That's not the case. You know, you're not getting hurt by this. It's very, very, very uncomfortable, and I know that. It doesn't feel great, but you're safe. It's just this trick, like I said, your body and your mind are working in concert to just screw with you and make you think that there's this immediate physical sense of danger. Let's take a minute and breathe again. In the field of psychology, which is my specialty, there is a term that's kind of big and complicated. It's called misattribution of interoceptive cues. What that means is a lot of anxiety is generated from misattributing, so mistaking sensations for other sensations. Internal feelings within your body that you think are anxiety related, but in reality, they're just normal. For example, I've worked with somebody professionally who had some issues with blood pressure. When they stood up or sat down, it would fluctuate, and every once in a while it would make them feel sort of faint or woozy or dizzy. Now, instead of taking a step back and looking at that, their brain, instead of noticing those things and saying these are a normal part of being human especially when you have some blood pressure issues instead their brain said hmm, this feels familiar what does this feel like you know what i think this means that we're panicking let's go ahead and finish the process and just have a full-on panic attack just in case your brain can really be a dick sometimes <laughs> But that's what happens. Maybe you have a feeling in your gut or a little pain in your chest or something. And instead of just taking it as par for the course as normal, you misinterpret it as an anxiety sensation and then continue the process. And when I say you, I don't mean you as a conscious person saying, okay, I'm going to have anxiety. Of course you don't want it, but it's just a natural process that your body goes through. So what you can do is you can Give yourself a second and wait. Tell yourself to wait, to slow down, because the anxiety thing in your brain tells you, hurry up, solve this, get it done, figure it out, do something. You don't have to do something right away. Wait and see. Especially if you already know that you're in good health, that you're not at risk for a stroke or a heart attack or anything like that. You can give yourself a few seconds. You can take a few deep breaths just like we have been doing. And see if that makes anything better. Because anxiety comes and it also goes. You have more control over it than you might think. And when you have a panic attack or strong anxiety, it doesn't feel good, but it's also okay because nothing happens. You get worked up and then eventually your body becomes exhausted and works back down. Now you can work to kickstart that process by engaging in deep breathing. What you do is you kick the part of your nervous system that's the opposite of the fight or flight response. You kick it into gear. So just like your anxiety monster in your brain says, oh, you're breathing hard? We must be anxious. Let's go ahead and have a panic attack. This other part of your brain, the other part of your central nervous system, says, oh, you're breathing deeply. Your heart's slowing down. It must be time to come in, bring things down a notch, and clean up the mess. So you can do that. And I've given you other strategies on other resources and videos about the types of breathing you can do. But it doesn't matter so much. Just spend some time breathing deeply. Now the thing is, you've got to practice your deep breathing. You have to teach your body how to calm down. And that's not going to happen right now. You're not going to be able to hit it out of the park right now. We're just looking to get you through in this moment. But after you're done with this, after this panic attack has passed, 
give yourself the gift of relaxation and practice breathing deeply, practice calming yourself down because when you get practiced in that and your body learns that sort of groove that it can go through to calm down, to leave that anxiety and those worries behind, then you might be able to rely on it when you're coming up against a situation in the future that makes you feel very, very anxious. So practice it just like any other skill that you would practice. And there's no wrong way to do it. We're just talking about breathing in deep, letting it go. Breathe in the good, breathe out the bullshit. You can do it, I promise. Now, if you're having anxiety so often that it's causing you real problems, by real problems I mean it's interfering with your relationships, it's causing you trouble in school, it's causing you trouble at work, there's nothing wrong with getting a professional opinion about it. That's not shameful. There are so many people who have anxiety. Just look at all the views that this video will eventually accumulate and all the people commenting who are just like you that can relate to this feeling of just being so anxious you don't know what to do with yourself. So if it is interfering with those things, by all means, go see a therapist or talk to your doctor because there's a lot of work that can be done. I'm helping you by talking about the stuff you can do right now. but. When you look at the core of why you're anxious in the first place, you can come to some really interesting realizations that help you to avoid it in the future. And of course, you have to remember that sometimes anxiety is the most appropriate reaction. When you're in a situation that's stressful, that's very scary, that's dangerous, anxiety is a normal reaction to have. So don't beat yourself up when that's the case. That's your body trying to keep you safe. In fact, even when anxiety isn't warranted, when it's just out of the blue, you can't be too mad at yourself because this is your brain trying to keep you safe, trying to kick you into mode to escape or fight back, do what you need to do. It may be misfiring in this moment, but its intentions are good. So you can kind of say to yourself, listen, brain, listen, anxiety. Thank you guys for trying, but I need to take the reins right now. I need to take control because this isn't a situation where I need you. And in that way, you can remove some of that guilt, some of that nasty feeling like, oh, this happened again. I'm such an idiot. No, you're not an idiot. You have good preservation instincts. And if we were cavemen and cave women, that would have kept you safe. But evolution is lagging behind a little bit, and it doesn't, you know, as humans, we don't properly discriminate between danger and non-danger all the time. So give yourself a little bit of slack. You're not alone in this. Keep breathing with me. We're going to wrap up here in a moment, and when we do, I want you to recognize that you actively did something by seeking out this video, by participating, by thinking about the things that I told you to think about. You are playing an active role in keeping yourself above ground, in keeping yourself well, in removing some of that anxiety where you can. You're doing this. What that means is that you do have some control. You do have some influence over yourself and over how you're feeling. I don't want you to forget that. Just in the same way that if I ask you to, you can probably work yourself up into an anxious frenzy. You also have the power to do the opposite. So remember that you have control over that. And then consider the other areas of your life that you do have control over. You may not have control over everything but I challenge you to think about the areas that you do. Areas like how you spend your time, who you spend your time with, what your habits are, how your sleep is, how you're eating. Think about those things and resolve to treat yourself well 
and set yourself up for success rather than allowing yourself to perpetually sabotage yourself over and over. I'm proud of you for thinking about this. I'm proud of you for coming here today. You got this. I believe in you. Don't forget to breathe.